Right then, you are small builds, you're gonna get them. So today's video is something that I've done quite a few times and I made a comment of it uh, on my Instagram recently and someone said, oh what, another commuter? How many do you have now? It's a fair point. Generally, my commuters get built, I use them for a season and then I move on to something else. So this is my winter commuter or what will turn into my winter commuter. Currently, we're about to go into a bit of a heat wave in London. Um, we should hit about 29 degrees at some point this week. So it's not very wintry, it's just still summer but this bike will be my winter commuter. With all my commuters, I tend to spend a lot of time hunting around for frames until I find that little gem and then I stash it for months and months and months. So if you've been a subscriber to the channel for some time, and if you're not, I suggest you become one. Uh, this one I bought probably back when it was cold. So I don't know, months and months and months ago, but it is a specialized hard rock. Um, it's, I think it's like 18 or 19 inch. So it's it's not quite a large, which is what I really do enjoy riding, especially when I'm commuting, um, but it's a big medium. So it should be perfect. But should we just stop talking about it and um, start the build? So here it is. This is the specialized hard rock. I picked it up on Facebook Marketplace for about 20 pounds. So uber cheap. And um, it's time to finally build it. It came in this wicked green color and the decals are like pink, but if I'm really honest in real life, it's closer to purple than it is pink. It came with plenty of patina on the bike or just rusty chips, which I really like. And yeah, lots of it. The bike came with the BB still inside the frame, uh, which pretty much only needs, means one thing in this game. It's stuck. So I pulled out my trusty wrench and uh, gave it a go. You can tell by my expression right now, uh, it is stuck. Now there's lots of ways to get a stuck BB out, but the one that usually is the one that works is just a really long breakers bar. This is one of those tools that I purchased God knows how long ago and I use it once in a blue moon. But when you have a stuck BB, you're glad you've got it. This is actually one of the worst ones I've had in ages. It was really quite stuck and it made this God awful sound. But after making that sound, well, a lot. It did finally come loose. Now, I was a little bit surprised when I took the BB off and the cup bit was on the drive side. Usually BBs are the other way around, at least in my experience, so maybe I'm wrong. Um, but the main part of the BB was on the non-drive side. This started to make me think a little bit that potentially this BB's been put in wrong and that's why it's so hard. Like look at the flex on the bar now. Like this side was way, way more stuck. Um, and I couldn't get it out. I definitely wanted to quit, but I also really, really wanted this frame. At this point, especially now looking back at this, the fact that it's in the stand is stupid. I mean, look at the pressure that I'm putting on <laughs> on it. It's not budging and there's so much flex on the stands. I was never going to win. But I kept going. I even at one point decided it might be worth getting a hammer out and giving it a good whack. This I definitely think was a good idea. I think it helped. I even went and put a hat on because that would make a difference and make me stronger. I don't know. But anyway, what you should do in this circumstance is actually walk away and have a break. I did that, had a cup of tea, had a bit of food, and then when I came back, my head was in the right place and I decided to actually put the bike on the floor and get some better leverage. So I put the seat post in with a seat and some bars mounted it firmly on the ground and had another go. Imagine if I just did that from the get-go, how much quicker that would have been. This took me three hours. Obviously there was a big break, but three hours. The headset was also a little stuck. Um, I grabbed the breaker bar again, which 
don't do this if you care about the paint. Like, you're, I'm never going to bend the fork with this sort of amount of pressure. Um, but don't, yeah, don't do it if you want to. Don't want to scratch it. Uh, and then, yeah, use that as leverage to kind of get the the headset off. Pulling the top of the headset off really kind of revealed the crust and the rust that was on the fork. Um, but also the crust and rust and gunk and awful stuff uh, that was in there. Also, the fork, the actual um, uh, wedge from the quill stem that was previous on this was wedged fully in the fork. Um, so that may be a problem, but we'll, we'll get to that in a little bit. With how seized the rest of the bike has been so far, didn't really want to pull these uh, cups out just because I figured they would be a pain to get back in or back out. So I just gave them a real good clean in place. Uh, as much as this headset could do replacing, uh, I kind of like it. It's a decent headset. The bearings potentially need to go in at some point, uh, but uh, for now, it will be perfect. Perfect's not the word. It'll be, it'll be okay. When I say okay, I really, really mean it's it's not okay. Like there's actually quite a lot of like dents and kind of like uh, gouges. I, was, I can't remember the actual word used, but from the bearings, they've just kind of like, they've worn it away. <laughs> it's trash, but it, it's um, it'll be okay for now. I'll, I'll, I'll have to replace it at some point, but this will be fine for now. Now the, uh, the BB and the, sh the, the actual frame itself, this is the tell of how bad this frame probably is on the inside and why that uh, that uh, BB was so stuck. But um, I, usually you really want to get some like frame safe or something in there. I didn't have any of that at the moment, so I just basically s sprayed a, a ton, like most of a can of uh, WD-40 in it. Eventually I'll probably try and do something about this frame, but for now, it will do. I did give it a good cleaning though, WD-40, bit of wire brush, a bit of wire brush, a wire brush, and um, just try to get a lot of the chunk out of the actual BB itself. Once I finished this part, the threads themselves were pretty clean, so the threads were okay at least, but um, those, the inside of those tubes are rough, is the best way to say it. But as we know, we do like a crusty bike round here, in fact we like proper crusty bikes, which brings me on to this. It's true, we really do like crusty bikes around here, and that is why we have this sticker. The proper crusty bike sticker that is in this rusty orange metallic -y mirror thing. You can buy those on my website, saveoldbikes.com, along with other cool stickers like Save Old Bikes and that one that says about safety warning, which is about fun bikes, and that other one about being a bulky boy and being proud of it and riding bikes and other things including this t-shirt which is uh, pretty cool it says save all bikes on the back you see it so yeah so if you fancy supporting the channel feel free to check out the link and um buy something cool for you or your mum maybe back to the build now before i did anything else i did want to double check to make sure a new bb would go in the worst thing to do is put a load of effort into polishing the frame up and then finding out the BB doesn't fit um, but it wasn't it was it was snug let's just say that way but it, it went in fine both sides by the way now what I do like doing on these bikes especially when they uh, are as crusty and patinaed as this um, is using like a rust converter to kind of get rid of that rust but I kind of liked it weirdly so I left it well I did give it a polish though uh, what I used was some tea cuts and some elbow grease. Tea cuts, amazing, amazing stuff. Essentially, it's a paint restorer. Uh, so you basically just rub it into the actual paintwork, into the frame as best you can, and then use a dry cloth to kind of then buff it back out again. Um, it doesn't take too long. Uh, if you put a lot of time into it, you can get it like absolutely sparkling. Uh, in this case, I just wanted it to kind of have a bit of a gleam to it just for photos and just kind of just the general look of it. Uh, plus the tea cut is, has a bit of like wax in it as well. So it kind of like protects it slightly from the weather, but not loads. Now we can get into the real juicy stuff, the rebuild. 
Uh, so starting off with the headset, uh, obviously give it a good bit of grease because this thing is a little bit worse for wear. But it's also going to be a commuter bike, so you want to get that protection in there because it's going to be ridden in all weathers. For the wheels, I went for these Pro Light wheels. I've had them on a few builds, so I've got a few sets. I really like them, they're super, super cheap. Uh, and then tires are Maxxis DTH. These are 2.2s. Uh, I really like these tires. They're not the most puncture resistant in the world, but um, they're super lightweight and they're pretty grippy throughout you know, summer and into the winter, which is this what this bike's for. It's the longevity one. I want it for the winter as well. So these are tip top in my opinion. And if you're wondering what I'm using to pump up these tires right now, it's the Side Plus Mini Cube Bike Pump. Uh, I really like this thing. I did a video on it recently. Uh, and there's also a discount code down below and a link if you want to check it out. Now, for the rest of the parts, there's quite a few things I'm going for. So the SRAM drivetrain, it's an X3 derailleur uh, and shifter, which does seven to eight. Uh, we are going for eight speed uh, cassette on this one. Uh, this one is a, I had to wait for it to show, 11.32. So it's, it's quite a decent amount of range. I won't need it for my commute, but it'll be fine. Um, we're going V-brakes just because these things never fail and I really like the setup on older bikes uh, with avid hand, uh, handles, <laughs> levers. Um, I've got a, a Sunday stem because I'm going for these Fairdale bars which are kind of a little bit like Sunrise bars, the surly ones, but a lot cheaper, literally half the price. Uh, and then these ODI Vans grips which are now gone. Um, really excited to try these out. Can you tell that I've left this wrench in the rain recently? Sorry, not sorry. No, I, I am sorry. I did post a clip of the the rear derailleur on my Instagram a few days ago, and people really like this quick release. Uh, I literally got it on Amazon. I got it for another project and never really used it, so it's just one of those ones just sat around. And I didn't like it when I put it on. It was more of a temporary thing, um, but now I absolutely adore it, and I want to get more purple on this bike to be honest it looks it looks really cool so yeah i'm not really a massive fan of dust caps but i had these brick caps with little skulls with purple helmets but i thought kind of went with the theme that was kind of purple that i didn't really realize i've also just spotted the tire it says 2.15 i said it was 2.2 earlier on i mean it's very close but it's not 2.2 it's 2.15 and then on with the front wheel um again this quick release does look very good and I think it kind of matches the purple again the hard rock does look more pink on video but it is kind of closer to the quick release in real life very odd how it does that but yeah crank arms are these Shimano Dior LX uh, pretty tatty looking but pretty solid for the commute uh, and then this I think they're called superstar components Raptor chain ring um, it's made in UK it's 38th tooth uh, and then it's the I needed a five bolt I can't remember the BCD of this uh, crank arm I'm sure someone in the comments will be able to enlighten us now I've used this derailleur a bunch actually I've bought a few of them I've reused a few of them I really like them they're super cheap they usually range between 10 and 20 pounds usually about 12 13 um, but essentially it's a, a SRAM X3 not essentially it is a SRAM X3 which will work on a 7 or an 8 speed cassette the chain itself is nothing special it's just an 8 speed SRAM chain it's got the the power link in it uh, so they're pretty easy to kind of sort out if you snap it or anything I don't often snap chains to be honest uh, and then uh, I do try and clean that uh, factory grease off of it there's always kind of 50-50 uh, a lot of people are on the fence and whether it's worth doing 
Um, I always find it is. I like a good clean chain. It's the one thing I try to maintain the most of the time. And I find that if you start with the sticky stuff, it will always be sticky to some point. Um, I use the Fenwick's All Weather Lube on the chain afterwards as well. And I find that that stuff sticks quite well to the chain, but it's also really easy to wash off. So you can get back to this point. So start clean and then it kind of helps you keep it clean. When it comes to measuring chains, I don't think I've ever mentioned this before, but essentially you want to put it on the biggest cog on the rear and the biggest cog on the front, or in this case, this one, uh, and then drop two links or put it together and then cut the two links down. This is why I don't often mention it because it's hard to describe without doing a demonstration. The best thing to do is head over to Part Tools website or YouTube channel and learn everything about dry frames there. Maybe one day I'll make a very in-depth with diagrams and all that sort of stuff. But for now, yeah, you put it together and then you count two links down and that's where you cut. That makes sense, right? Then once you've connected your chain, uh, put the chain or the link in the middle at the top and then one powerful down of the pedal is links it up. That's what I'm doing here. God, my words are going. Now with the stem, uh, like I mentioned earlier, I'm using the Sunday stem. Um, this fork has the quill wedge still in it. I mentioned that earlier on in the video. Um, so I wasn't quite sure what to do. Part of me wanted to just use a different fork. Part of me wanted to try get out. The rest of me was just like, you know what? Let's just stick a stem in. Um, this is uh, clearly come out of another bike. It's a little bit greasy, a little bit dirty at the moment. Um, I was just testing out to see what it would look like and kind of how it would fit. Um, and the height was fine, to be honest. Um, this is a commuter bike. It's meant to be a bit more comfortable. So the height is good. The only problem really was the fact that it left exposed a big part of the quill adapter which I didn't like too much um, so I decided to fill that space with something nice. Pretty sure I saw Toasty do this once so that's where I got the idea from uh, but yeah just a little bell. Sounds nice right? It also actually started raining at this point. I always forget to hit record in the rain. I'm too busy trying to do this as quickly as possible. Um, so I did skip ahead just a touch. So I have added the handlebars now, the Fairdale ones. I've also put the, the, the radio, or sorry, the shifter on, the levers, and then the grips. The grips, by the way, are very nice. Um, we'll learn more about those down the line once I've actually started riding this properly, but like, holy moly, they're cool. Um, but I've also, added the brakes um, so yeah i jumped ahead just a touch so now it is down to well cabling so the cables of choice are pink um measuring cables is right between art and science um so i don't often talk about it much um i also keep promising to make a video on it so maybe i'll do some in depth one day um, but the main thing is just take your time Derailleurs are another one of those things that's kind of right in between art and science, but it's probably more science to be fair. Um, the way that I tend to do it is before I put any cables on there, I will start with the high limit screw, um, which is the one that does the smallest cog. So essentially the 11 tooth cog that you kind of do when you're at high speed. Um, so that one, you change that until it is very smoothly running in that tiny little cog. Then with your hands, I push, whilst pedaling that is, I push the derailleur until it gets to that big cog. Very gently to make sure it doesn't jump straight into the wheel. Okay, so then when I use the screwdriver, I then tighten that so it can't go any further. And if you push it, you shouldn't be able to get the chain to go into the wheel. Now, when you go to do your cabling, there's no way when you're adjusting it, that it's gonna go into the wheel or into the actual axle of the bike or the frame of the bike, the drop out of the bike. There you go, we got there in the end. Now, once you've put the cable in, it's a case of just putting it into the actual derailleur itself and making sure it's taut. Not super tight, but just taut. Maybe that's not the right word. And then slowly start working your way through the gears, adjusting it at the, uh, the shifter and the handlebars until you get it to shift through the cogs perfectly, really. If you've got that first setup and the chain line all perfect, it shouldn't be too hard to do. If you're finding it really hard to set up your gears at this stage, there's something probably not quite right. 
Now, I know I'm going to get comments now saying that that wasn't explained very well, and you're right, it really, really wasn't. But people keep asking me to do this in my videos, so I'm trying. Um, I will try harder, and I do want to do a video which is a bit more centered around this instead of just, just throwing information at you at the end of the video. Um, but we do need to move on to the last part of this build. We're moving on to the saddle, and uh, we've got a freshie. Um, I've said this nearly every single build I've ever made because I always use charged spoons, but charged spoons are the best seat. And most people agree with me. <laughs> but um, yeah, charged spoon as always. And I also found a black seat post uh, because, well, I wanted it to kind of match the silver one I had originally. Or it actually came with a silver seat post. We, no, I'm not about that. And that's that. That is the end of the build. So, um, we should probably go and take a look at it, don't you think? And that brings us to the end of another video and a pretty fun one i really really enjoyed making that bike uh, i've been riding it for about a week now and it is mwah, it is kind of perfect um i definitely still wish i had a slightly bigger bike i definitely love those big large frames but um it's this is it fits me it's not uncomfortable if anything it's very comfortable um potentially might look into getting a slightly longer stem at one point um i do quite like a little bit of reach hence the bigger frames and i think if i made this slightly longer it'd be just that touch but it's I don't have to, it's fine. It's nice and I'm enjoying the ride in it. But uh, if you're enjoying my videos at the moment, now is a very good time to subscribe because I do have a big paint job coming up. If you're following me on Instagram, you may have seen some of this so far, but this is the fork for my Minute or my Kona UTE, the miniature version, so it's slightly shorter. But it is my cargo bag that I am building. And this is the kind of, a, almost like a galaxy type fluoro paint job I'm doing. It's one of those ones that's super annoying because like in person, it's insane. Um, but uh, on camera, it's quite hard to get it. So I need to get some decent glamour shots when I finished it. Um, I need to lacquer it and then edit the video. So that should be next week's video. If not, uh, I've died or something. So make sure you subscribe. But that's it. That is the end of the video. That's enough for now. Don't forget to check out saveoldbikes.com for those stickers and merch. It really does help the channel out and um, helps me create these bikes. So if you want to see more of these, please buy a few stickers or or don't. Just, just you know, like it, comment. That helps as well and it costs you nothing. So if you haven't already, do hit the subscribe button, which is this one here. And um, if you can't wait until next week's video, you should try that one. That one is a particularly good one.